welcome back everyone to the hello world guy and this is another episode of the mario game series and in this video instead of like creating a dummy map using this function which uh, just creates a map with a bunch of columns in it we are actually going to create be creating a like a picture in which we represent the map so that we can read that picture and then you know uh, kind of make the map uh, using it so that we can you know edit our levels a bit more easily because you, we cannot like go and write everything out by hand in a code file we want to have like a visual way of doing it and the most easiest way is to just use a picture for that so i have already created that picture in photoshop this is like 24 by 16 pixels and in here these black tiles uh, represent the places where we are actually going to have our tiles in the game this red is supposed to represent where mario will spawn and the white is basically like uh, empty place where there is nothing so if i i just created it in photoshop really easily you can do that as well and uh, uh, you, you need to make sure that the pixel values uh, of the colors the color values actually rgb values match exactly because uh, we are going to checking them in sfml so black needs to be like absolutely black with 000 on red green and blue and this red needs to have in like full 255 on the red but the green and blue must be zero because uh, these values matter if you just like increase or decrease one from it it might not make a difference visually but uh, our program will not be able to read it so yeah this is uh, what we have got right now and uh, now we are going to go ahead and try to implement that so uh, in here i am going to open up my map.h file and I'm going to actually go ahead and add a new uh, function here called load from image in which we are going to get a const character pointer co called file name and this is just a string in case you don't know because uh, using the like the whole string class will be a bit you know uh, over so we are not going to do that uh, so with that done we can actually uh, remove this create dummy map function because we don't really need it anymore and uh, what we can do is we can go in the map.cpp file and implement this load from image function so i'm going to go in here and uh, uh, we'll remove that in a second let's just create the load from image function and in here we are going to create an sf colon colon texture you might want to use a texture for this let's just do even though we will have to change it in a second as you will see then we are going to like just go ahead and say texture dot load from file and provide it the file name then uh, we are actually going to change the name to load from image file because load from image seems like we are taking an sf colon colon uh, image uh, object or something so we are uh, we don't want that so i'm going to make it a uh, load from image file instead and uh, okay like that so yeah just uh, a little bit of a name change so in the map.cpp what we are actually going to do is uh, Mm, we are going to loop over this texture so uh, we are going to uh, let's just remove that function first and uh, now let's go ahead and uh, loop over it so go for uh, we are going to say int uh, i is equal to zero i is less than and in the length we are going to say texture dot get size dot x so we are going to loop over the x first and then we might want to you know loop over y but uh, oh, we cannot use the i variable again and it would make a lot more sense to instead of using i to use uh, x and y here so i'm going to change that to x and change this to y and in this we are just going to run it until texture dot get size dot y and then increase it on uh, every iteration and uh, that's awesome and we need to make this y alright that works so in this loop we need to uh, you know uh, create our map so there is a problem here which is that currently our map has a fixed height which may not be the case every time so we are actually going to remove this type def uh, array from column and instead replace it with vector uh, so that we can have variable height uh, as well and, uh, and, we and this column and, and grid are we are going to just keep them like that and uh, I'm going to go to the map.cpp and in here we are going to create an sf colon colon uh, yeah, not sf colon colon just column so we are going to create a column here called column and uh, we are going to grid dot push underscore back to add that column to our main maps grid every time we run that and in this we are going to uh, add something to the column and what we are going to add is going to be uh, a boolean because remember we have basically got a vector uh, of uh, vector basically we have got a two dimensional vector of booleans so we are going to go ahead and say texture dot 
now uh, here what we want to do is we want to get the pixel value of the x and y but uh, as far as i know it's not really easy to do that with just the texture you can't like put this it gives an error and there is no way to like uh, say texture or get pixel or something so we are going to change this to sf colon colon image and uh, change the name to image as well that's because uh, since we are not actually applying this texture to something uh, it makes a lot more sense to just use image so we are going to get image dot get pixel and we are going to provide it with x and y and we are going to check if this is equal to sf colon colon uh, black sf colon colon color colon colon black and if that is the case uh, and by the way you need to make sure that in the draw function you use const here uh, because it's giving an error otherwise and once we do that mm, this is essentially going to work and uh, we can and you know uh, add this to our column and if it's not equal it will automatically add false and if it is it will add true now of course there is one more thing to do which is to go under main.cpp and since we don't have this create dummy map function we are going to do go load from image file and make sure that you have got the map.png in your working directly uh, directory which means your main project directory and uh, you have added it to the solution as well I'm, i have uh, done it here so we have got three pictures right now block.png mario.png and map.png uh, these are our resource files so we are going to load this uh, from map.png and uh, this is essentially going to work so um, there are a couple of problems but let's first try this out so as soon as this loads up uh, if it actually does you should be able to see that uh, uh, if it uh, works now it's taking a little bit of a time but you can see that uh, our mario did not okay that went wrong uh, let's try again our mario uh, did not spawn at the correct position and that's because uh, uh, well it's simply because Mar we did not load that yet but uh, the map has been loaded correctly now of course the map is actually smaller than you know the screen right now and uh, yeah this is what it looks like now of course we want to have the ability to like make the map smaller than the screen you can make the map larger if you want to by the way but uh, if you want like the map to be smaller than the screen then it might make sense to like have the screen start at the bottom uh, left corner but that's something we'll do in the next video uh, for this video we are going to now make it so that mario actually spawns at the correct position as well so in order to implement that functionality i made a couple of changes to the code first of all uh, in mario now the constructor takes a, a vector uh, to called position and which is by default 50 50 the default position and they've have, they've have got a separate method called init for initialization because uh, now we, this constructor might be called more than once and we want that only to uh, we want to load the texture only once so in this init method we basically just load the texture and set the sprite and in the uh, you know constructor we initialize everything and then uh, we set this uh, rectangle position to position dot x and position dot y so that uh, whatever position we pass here the rectangle position will be that and since we have got this default value then that means that even if we do not provide it with this value it will still have a default now in the main.cpp file we are uh, basically you know setting mario here again to uh, mario dot uh, uh, to map dot load from image file which is now returning a vector 2 which uh, because when the map loads it is going to return a vector 2 called uh, uh, whatever you can uh, you can call it like uh, mario's position or something so it returns that vector that we can use for mario's position and how is that implemented let's go here now it's returning a vector 2 and we create a vector 2 called mario position which is by default 50 50 and in the end we just return mario position and if that doesn't work then in here we uh, basically check if the pixels color is equal to red when we are so we basically now instead of just taking it directly we are actually loading the pixel uh, creating a variable called pixel and storing it here and if its color is equal to red then what we are going to do is we are going to set mario position to a new vector to f where the x of this so this x multiplied by cell size and this y multiplied by cell size which is going to give us the correct position and uh, we just say uh, uh, column dot push back uh, pixel is equal to black or whatever that uh, normally and we return mario position in the end so now this is basically all we need for our uh, you know uh, loading system uh, for all of map so you can see mario is now at the correct position that i uh, chose and i can change that position to whatever i want and mario will be spawned there so if i uh, like uh, raise this from here and then i go ahead and uh, use red color and i 
like put this here or something actually red I meant uh, not really uh, red so that's what I want okay now if I put this here so you can see if I save and go here and uh, uh, yeah reload that and you can see it now here and if I let me turn on the grid okay so if I run this what you should see is that uh, mm, okay Mario did not spawn there actually you can see Mario spawned here instead of spawning there which is a bit of a problem and the reason might be because if I go in here you can see that it's not perfectly uh, red right now so you want to make sure that the blue there is no blue here you want to make sure it's uh, like perfectly red because I told you that the pixel values matter Mario was just spawned at the default location right now so I'm going to save that and uh, let's make sure that we have got RGB here and uh, let me try it out again okay that works so we are going to go under here visual studio now and reload it and then let's uh, run the game and see if it works this time so if i run what you should see is that mario now spawns there great so yeah this was pretty much it for this video in the next video we are going to uh, well we also need to implement the camera but first i think we need to fix a little bug in which uh, we set is rounded to true even if mario like literally uh, you know hit uh, the top of his head which means that we can now like we are pressing the up key and it literally jumping again and again which means we can like uh, uh, also walk on the uh, ceiling uh, kind of so we need to fix this problem and so that we set is grounded to true only if we hit uh, like uh, a cell below mario and not if we um, hit something above mario and also not if we hit, uh, hit something like to the diagonal or something we want to only do it if it's bottom because right now if i hit this here that won't work because it's horizontal but this is vertical and, uh, and that's the reason that it detects it as like uh, a uh, valid place to jump so we need to fix that bug and we will do that in the next video so stay tuned for that i'll see you in the next one make sure to like and subscribe as well and share this video with other people and bye